Get ready for the smackdown Get ready for the smackdown How you gonna react when you're put in the back Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the smackdown Hey poses, welcome to the first ever edition of Grumpy Cheetos Smackdown in a Shot Glass. Just want to explain something to you guys really quick. I am kind of replacing Anonymous Angel here on Smackdown in a Shot Glass just because of time. She doesn't really have time. Um, but that does not mean she's gone forever. There may be some random week where Anonymous Angel is doing Smackdown in a Shot Glass. So, or we might do it together. We might do a collaboration. You never know. Here at The Revolution, we like to spice things up every now and then. But I'm glad to be here on SmackDown, as you saw if you, if you watched the video uh, of the game What's Next for Grumpy Cheeto. It's actually quite entertaining of a video. You should probably watch it. So let's kick off the show for SmackDown, which is this week in my backyard of Kansas City, Missouri. Wait, that's where ECW was this past Tuesday. It's almost like they taped SmackDown while they're there. I don't know. It's better than Raw. All right, so we kick off the show with an in-ring promo with Chris Jericho, and he says that he beat The Undertaker last week. And, you know, that it's a feat in itself, and he's the best, and blah, 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 blah. Then Edge comes out and says, yeah, you beat The Undertaker last week, but thanks to me, because I, because The Undertaker kicked me in the face, so I speared him, and you capitalized. So what? Edge, you've been guilty of worse. So... I don't know. Then somebody like plays with the fuse box in the back, the lights flicker, and then uh, I don't know where Edge does a kind of crappy spear on Jericho, and Jericho sells it crappy too. It's just kind of like, Aah. So let's move on to the first match of the night. First match of the night is Kane versus Mr. Perfection himself, Dolph Ziggler. This was a pretty good match. I mean, um, you know, these two guys have gone at it before. They're pretty familiar with each other's, other's ring work. And, you know, they just kind of worked it. Um, then in the middle of the match, Drew McIntyre came out with some crappy new music. I know he, he debuted it last week, but it's just like it's Randy Or it's just like Randy Orton's music. They're trying to play Drew McIntyre off. It's like the Randy Orton on SmackDown. I like his old music better. So anyway, um, Dolph tried to put... Kane in the sleeper hold again, trying to, you know, pick up a victory or via count out or tap out or sleep or whatever. And uh, that didn't happen. Um, and then Kane uh, choke slammed him, got the one, two, three. Um, this is a pretty good match. Um, Drew McIntyre comes in after the match and tries to do his, his double underhook finisher on Kane. Kane reverses it and Drew McIntyre sells it pretty well, actually. Um, Gonna introduce a rating system here to you. I don't know if any of you have heard us. I tried to do it once before, but I don't even think the footage made it on YouTube. It was with the AD. Um, but I am going to rank all my matches in Power Ranger rankings. So this match, Dolph Ziggler versus Kane, I'm giving three out of five Red Rangers. Next, we have a commercial with uh, apparently Big Zeke is coming to SmackDown. All right. I'm very happy that the final ECW champion of Ezekiel Championship Wrestling is coming on to the show. So I can't wait to see him debut in the next couple weeks. But speaking of ECW talent debuting on SmackDown, the next match is Crime Time versus Croft Beretta or yeah, Croft and Beretta. Cue music. That's right, the ambiguously gay duo are here on SmackDown. Or at least I think maybe they're free agents and they're just on SmackDown this week. I don't know. But they, pre they pretty much fit in SmackDown because they're a light heavyweight tag team. It makes sense to have them on SmackDown. Not, this was actually a really good match. Good tag team match. Good work. But tonight was like full of freaking tag team matches. I couldn't believe it. But um, one of the notes I have is, uh, is Matt Stryker called Croft and Beretta the Dude Busters. Cue music. So the ambiguously gay duo um, beat on JTG for like five minutes until like JTG finally gets, and there's actually some good tag work between Croft and Beretta. JTG finally gets Shad in the ring. Shad finishes the match off and Shad hits a pretty good STO for the one, two, three. Um, this match, I give four out of five Black Rangers. 
I want to say this was the match of the night, honestly. This was actually a really good matchup. Got decent time, decent ring work. Um, the only thing is that Chad didn't get too much time in the ring, but eh, what are you going to do? It's an undercard match. Next, we go to a backstage promo with John Morrison and Michael Cole Jr., Josh Matthews in the back. And uh, really, the only note on this is, you know, he asked him about his ankle, and then he says, this, my whole career has been culminating to this Sunday. How many times do people have to say that my whole career has been culminating to this? Like, Shawn Michaels' career would have been over, like, 18 years ago. And it's like, it's not the end of their career. It's not culminating to that career that day. It's a potential up, like, upstandard of, of their career, but it's not like culmination. So anyway, we move to the next match, which is going to be match three, CM Punk and Luke Gallows versus John Morrison and R-Truth. Um, this match starts off with a standard CM Savior speech. And I want to know why John Morrison was following R-Truth outside the ring. Like, R like John Morrison's this like newbie rookie trying to get some popularity off of R-Truth. Morrison is a much higher star than R-Truth is right now. And... I don't know, it just didn't make much sense to me. Um, it was an okay match. I give it two out of five Yellow, Ranger, bleh, yellow Rangers. And uh, I don't know. It, it came to an end when John Morrison went to kick CM Punk on the apron. Miss hit the turnbuckle post. Ow! And then he faked the whole broken angle injury again. Um, and then, you know, CM Punk works on that for a while, but then the referee stops the match because of an injury. Afterward, there's a post-match beatdown on R-Truth and John Morrison. Ray comes out, also gets beat down, which I'm pretty sure they're going to start building towards Ray Mysterio, CM Punk at WrestleMania. And yeah, so see, the Straight Edge Society looking pretty strong. Another backstage promo in the back. We've got Teddy, Vicky, and Mickey James. Mickey James trying to apologize. Vicky just makes a women's title match for next week against Michelle McCool. Nah, yeah, that's about it. Match four of the night was pretty disappointing in my book. Matt Hardy, the great Kali, and Maria versus the Hart Dynasty. Tyson Kidd, D.H. Smith, and Natalia. It was really hard for me to give this a ranking because I love the Hart Dynasty. And Matt Hardy, I love Matt Hardy. The great Kali and Maria, I could leave, live without. They could go and do whatever. They could just, they could, they could be Valentines, and I really wouldn't care for them. But, you know. So I gave this two out of five Pink Rangers. It was a okay match. Maria and Natalia started off and. You know, Natalia pretty much wiped the mat with Maria in the beginning. Um, then, now I want to say Natalia tagged in Tyson Kidd. And then Matt Hardy came in, got beat down for, like, the most of the match, which it was a short match, might I add. Then, uh, Matt, in a weird exchange, like, Maria t clearly tagged herself in, but then she was confused as to why she was tagged in. And Natalia came over, pulled her over the top rope, beat the mess out of her. And then hit her with a, a discus clothesline for the three count. It was a pretty short match. And a pretty disappointing match, honestly. Um, the only good note about this match I really have is... The Great Kali wasn't in it. He was standing on the apron the whole time. Maybe he got down on the floor for a little bit. Sorry. Alright, backstage promo. Piggybacking off the last match. About uh, Matt Hardy and Maria saying... Nah, 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 nah. Maria says a classic line here. She says, I've lost millions of matches. So it pretty much means she's lost all of her matches. I'm not a huge fan of Maria's in-ring work. She should have stayed as a backstage personality, honestly. But, um, yeah, and then uh, Team McFool comes in, as Anonymous Angel likes to call him, and uh, they try to cut this beautiful people promo, and it just doesn't work for them. Like, they're not the beautiful people. Team McFool is like, well, Michelle McCool and Layla, they're just, and I want to know what's going on with Beth Phoenix. First she's a part of their stable, then she's not, then she is, then she's not. I... Where's Beth Phoenix? Just put her in the freaking stable for crying out loud. All right, then we move on to the main event, which is Batista versus Edge. Um, nothing really notable in this match either. The only thing I noted was that Edge was limping around the ring halfway through the match. Can we say Achilles tendon tear again? This guy is going to kill himself. He came back too early, and it's just it's not going to work for him. He's going to kill himself doing this. Don't be an idiot, Edge. Take more time off. Come back at SummerSlam. You know, well, he can't because he won the Rumble. I mean, when his Achilles tendon tears again and then he's out for WrestleMania, what are they going to do then? They're going to feel stupid. 
And I, this really ticks me off because they keep pushing talent and they keep injuring themselves. And this is why guys like Batista, Edge, Rey Mysterio, and all these other guys are like injury prone. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up here. I gave this last match a 3 out of 5 uh, Blue Rangers just because it's SmackDown and it's blue. Uh, at the end, uh, Edge reversed into a spear on Batista. Taker comes out, choke slams Edge. Batista runs for the hills, and as Taker's leaving, Jericho comes in and hits a sweet, running, jumping code breaker on Edge. It was flawless. Um, and that's it, Jericho's standing tall in the middle of the ring. Um, overall, I give this show a 2 out of 5 Green Rangers. It wasn't very great. There were some good points, but not enough good points to offset the bad points. So, anyway, uh, I'm Grumpy Cheeto, and... This is it for my first SmackDown in the Shot Class. Peace. Get ready for the smile.